So now we're going to deal with one of my favorite parts of working in Maxwell, and that's working with the complex IOR. Now, right up here, you'll see at the top, we have IOR and we have custom. That's what we've been talking about all this time is all these settings right here. However, once we get down here where it says measure data, all those options go away. And instead, it's replaced by this one little drop down list here. You just click on that and you can load one of these IOR files and you'll find them in your materials database. So there they are. They're just text files is all they are, but they have a lot of information about the different NDs and extinction coefficients and different wavelengths of light and color and all different types of stuff. So now we have created a complex IOR based material. Now you notice that we still have roughness, anisotropy, and angle that are available to us along with this complex IOR. So let's go over here and take a look at some materials that I've already prepared that are done exactly the same way. So this is a glass material and you can see here I have glass 7059 IOR and that's just one of many that are in the library. We're going to look at all of them. These are real glasses. These are glasses that you find in the real world and they have very specific numbers. Let's see a render with, and shows what these look like. So here's 7059. BK7. This is borosilicate, okay, which tends to be the type of thing that you use for Pyrex and stuff like that. Corning, K7 Crown, and some Light Flint, and some Swarovski, even some violet glass here. So these are different types of glasses that you might find in an industrial type environment where you're creating products and you're doing some sort of design and you need a very specific type of glass to match the product. This is when something like this would be very useful. Now you'll notice that dispersion is enabled here. You can see the rainbow effect. And because of the complex IOR data, you're going to get very different dispersion effects depending upon which particular glass you're working with. These, you're welcome to play with them. Generally speaking, this is probably going to take longer to render than you will want. Glass, by far, is going to be the most time consuming of the IORs. And it's really going to be much nicer looking than regular glass, but it's not going to fulfill your everyday glass rendering needs. So for your everyday glass rendering needs, I'd say just you know do a custom IOR. If you're needing the complexity of a complex IOR, then certainly use that. Now, we also have gemstone IORs, and this is probably the most commonly used place where you would get those complex IORs. And you can see here we have amethyst and diamonds and rubies and all kinds of stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at that render. And this is really very nice stuff, gemstones. So here we go. We got amethyst, aquamarine, yellow barrel, a diamond, and you can really see the dispersion very strongly in the diamond. You can also see how deeply the diamond is bending the light. And that's a byproduct of the index of refraction for diamonds is very high for a dielectric material. Then we have uh, two different types of emeralds. One that's kind of a little bit cloudy, which is kind of cool. And then we have a garnet and a blood red ruby and a sapphire and then a medium blue sapphire. And then I don't even know how to pronounce that. Tourmaline, I think. Anyway, the bottom line is we have a bunch of these and there's even more available for download on the material warehouse. So you're, you're welcome to go hunt those down. But you can really see the dispersion kicking in. I mean, even here, you can see there's sort of like this green to blue rainbow for the sapphire, which is really cool. And you wouldn't get that normally without the complex IOR. So that's that's another instance where the complex IORs really come into play. And then the last category where I would use them, and, and this has been somewhat replaced in the new version of Maxwell with the being able to put in the K values because it allows you to get some of the benefits of doing the complex IORs without actually having the rendered overhead. That said, the metals render the quickest out of anything for the complex IORs. I mean, they're, they're virtually the same. So let's go ahead and take a look at those renders. So here we have aluminum, chromium, copper, gold, iridium, iron, nickel, platinum, silver, titanium, and zinc. And there's several more in there. So these would be commonly used materials that you would find a use for 
with the complex IORs, and they're going to look a lot more realistic. Now, bear in mind, metals on this type of stage don't look so realistic because they don't have much to reflect, and of course, metals are all about reflection, so they need some sort of interesting environment to reflect, but this is a pretty boring environment. Looks better on the glass and the gemstones than it does on the metal, but I kept it the same so that you could see them all side by side. The gold probably looks the, the most interesting out of all of them. What I would say is that when you're using the custom IORs, meaning you're using your own ND and you're using your own K values and so on and so forth, you have a lot more control. A complex IOR, you saw you had no control. I mean, it, it is what it is. You get what you get. It's absolutely accurate, but at the same time, it's completely uncustomizable. So it's a trade-off. You have to make your decisions as to what you're after. If you're wanting this, and I mean you're wanting that, then obviously a complex IOR is the way to go. If you're wanting a diamond, then no question about it, complex IOR is the way to go. Or if you're wanting a Swarovski crystal, then obviously complex IOR is the way to go. However, if you're just wanting a general metal, then probably using one of the wizard metals or creating your own custom is probably going to be just fine, maybe even better, and it's going to render faster too.